Hello, gear nerds of the internet. What is this handsome thing, you ask? This is the Manly Shrimp, and we're going to be talking about that today. Stay tuned. Six in the morning. All right, this is the Manly Shrimp preamp. As you can see, it has a gigantic knob, a knob of doom, which is fantastic for the single reason that when my wife is like, turn down the music, it's too loud. Or how do I turn this down? It's the big knob, easy to find. Can't see how big this is in real life. I have gigantic hands. This thing is, is huge. It's fantastically large. That is not what she said. Anyway, so has a balance, go like this, sound goes that way, has a dimple in the middle so you can find neutral and then this way, it's got five inputs, an on off switch and a mute switch. Now when you power this on, this lights up so that's pretty cool, like a matchless guitar amplifier. <laughs> Love it. And then mute button. And so when you fire this thing on, this mutes itself for some amount of time. Let's say 10 seconds. Actually, let's not quantify because I don't know. Some amount of time, this flashes and then it'll be unmuted. And then at any point, the wife could hit this button as well to shut my music down. Let's look at the back, shall we? I think we shall. All right, this is what we have, a fuse, IEC, two outs in case you wanted to send this to two different amplifiers, or you could send it to a sub, or you could send it to a sub from this, but uh, I haven't tried that. Usually record out is not uh, a variable, it is whatever um, output, it's a standard, it's a set output, whereas this, when you turn the volume up, it's gonna send more of it, so that's probably preferable for your subwoofer out. At least that's how I use it. You could read those, right? I don't have to read that, but there's five of them. Let's go back to the front. Let's actually, I already have the cover off. It has this perforated cover for lots of ventilation and lots of dust to get into the side of it. Um, did I mention it was a tube amp? Oh, it's a tube amp. It has Two 1287s. These happen to be made in Britain mullards, so real ones, not the ones made in Russia. And then two 7044 tubes. I am not familiar with those because those do not come in guitar amplifiers. That is sort of uh, where I don't understand the tubes anymore. It's some sort of preamp tube, that's what I can tell you. Um, they are General Electric, I assume made in the US back when they made tubes in the US still. I guess they still kind of do, but not really. Um, let's see, is this all tube? Do I see any? I see. Sorry, I am looking for, and I'm not seeing any sort of op amp or JFET or anything in here. So this might be all tube. 2,000 years later. Um, but I don't really see any, and I'm, I'm probably wrong, but I don't see anything in here indicative of there being, I think it's all tube guys, essentially except for like maybe a rectifier. Um, all right, wow, that was stupid. I should have done that before. So you have some really high quality uh, uh, Cornell Dublier. I don't know how to pronounce that second part, uh, but I've heard of these and these are good. Uh, electrolyte capacitors, you have Nichicon, which are also high. And then you have these, which might've been replaced by someone at some point, but 
based on the solder joints, they look original. The Exicon, those are uh, kind of on the lower end. Um, they're not, like these are definitely higher grade than, than those. And I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know if they've been replaced. Like I said, it looks like they haven't. I don't see that. Because normally you can tell when someone resolders something that doesn't usually look like all the rest of the solder joints. But, so in terms of construction, as you can see, it's not, the board isn't flat. It is horizontally, no, vertically uh, situated in here. My one complaint about that is that you have these preamp tubes directly mounted to the PCB, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. Um, cause these don't generate a lot of heat and it's pretty well ventilated, but as you can see, this board flexes a bit. So if you're pushing in these preamp tubes, the board is going to flex and a flexing PCB is eventually going to cause broken solder joints. So that's a thing to be wary of, um, when you're pushing, like I would, you can't see cause my hands and I would hold this while pushing this down to make sure that you're not flexing that board or flexing it as little as possible. But yeah, everything in here is super solid. So you might be asking yourself, uh, what is a shrimp compared to a jumbo shrimp? Cause that is a question that I asked myself. And then I asked Manly cause I couldn't find that information anywhere on the interweb. And I asked them at almost a midnight on a Friday and I expected to get an answer sometime early in the week. Maybe I got an email back from Ivana Manley, the, I don't know if she's the owner, but she's the head honcho at Manley in like less than an hour, like at night on a Friday. That is the level of support guys you get from Manley. It's incredible. Incredible. I was super blown away by that. Uh, I mean, granted, she's in California and I'm in New York and there's a three hour difference, but it's still late on a Friday and she's still answering dumb questions from dummies like me. It's pretty fantastic. Um, so I got an answer. Part of the answer makes sense. So uh, the main difference is that the jumbo shrimp is, has a remote to go up and down on, uh, not the balance, but on the volume. And the other difference is that there is a tube, um, I'm gonna murder what she said, hang on. Let me look it up, because I'm stupid. I don't remember anything. Perfect time to find this. She said an additional tube buffer at the volume control. So I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know what that means sonically, um, but and what that, I don't know what that gets you, but it does something and they wouldn't have done it if it didn't matter. But so this thing sounds pretty stinking good. It is, um, I would say that it is, well, let's compare it to this thing. God, I'm getting kind of sick of this thing. Oh gosh. Also all tube, also way less handsome. Also, if you have a problem with this or have a question about this, who are you going to email? I don't know. Nobody. Cause no one's going to support this thing. But again, this is way cheaper, so you can't really compare that. Um, so I plug these guys into my VIDAR and at low volumes, this is going to be a little shocking, like real low volume, like background music, like where it's not really bothering you. This has a more balanced, maybe better at those levels than this. Um, where that changes is once you apply any sort of real volume, this thing 
this thing sounds grainy and this thing just sounds fantastic all the way through. I would say that this is more neutral across the entire spectrum. This is maybe, maybe just a touch more mid-rangey, a little bit. I hesitate, hesitate to even say it because it's not, like if you had a scale of one to 100 and 50 is neutral, it would be like 55, like just barely. Um, this is also warmer than this. To me, at, at listening volumes, this is far more enjoyable to listen to than this, which you might expect because this is $300. And then the Jumbo Shrimp, I think, is around $4,000. Um, this, I think, when they stopped making this was two grand, maybe, around there. So, um, yeah, the, this thing is practically vintage at this point. I don't know if you guys noticed, I'll get rid of this thing, that, yeah, sorry for my big hairy arm in your face. Well, there you go. You can see that maybe, maybe. It says 2002. This thing is 20 years old. Now, this has some capacitors that are going to fail sooner than later, potentially, which I guess is, you know, whatever. It doesn't really make sense. Um, so, Eventually, I'm going to have to replace those. Maybe, maybe not all of them, but definitely some of them down the road sooner than later. And by sooner, I mean within the next 5 to 10 years versus next 50 years. I guess that's true of all electronic components. But as you can see, you can easily access... I'm not going to touch them. Um, those solder connections to where these are. And if you're like, well, then you have to find these. Manly has a web page called tubesrule.com where you can get replacement tubes. You can get uh, electrolytic capacitors. You can even get replacement knobs. You can get all you ever wanted on that website. It is fantastic. It is quite the little ecosystem. Um, you, with you getting there too, you should really need to watch um, Michael Fremer's um, video when he goes to the Manly factory. It is, fa it is fascinating. That, watching that is what I actually, that I found this used and I'm like, I gotta buy that because this company rules and I gotta check out their stuff. The way that they, they test and match their tubes is, I don't think that these mullards came from them. These were probably someone who had it that wanted something uh, a little bit fancier. Um, these probably came from them, I would assume. Um, how, they, how they match and test their tubes is just fantastic. How they make everything is fantastic. Um, Ivana Manley is a boss in the, in the world of hi-fi, even though Manley barely exists in hi-fi, really. Their main thing is, uh, like studio recording gear, like microphones and preamps and that sort of stuff. And they kind of do this stuff on the side. If you don't know the history of Manly, it was a spinoff of the VTL company that is still around making tube. They were making most, I think all tube um, stereo equipment, hi-fi equipment. And they spun off Manly to make the studio equipment and then uh, Ivana ended up running the company. Uh, it was previously run by her husband. Uh, now I think she and the ex-husband, I don't need to go into that. This isn't TMZ. Um, and she's been killing it. She's been making like, this is a fantastic preamp. Um, they make the Chinook phono preamp that I want to try and that I think would look really awesome next to this, just sitting on my shelf matching. Oh, 
double handsomeness. So it's a, it's a company that um, doesn't really do hi-fi as its main thing, but it does it really well. And it's using uh, the knowledge gained from the studio gear into their, their hi-fi gear. And it seems to be working pretty well for them. To me, Manly's up there with Audio Research um, and those sort of companies. They're, um, yeah, they are fantastic. Great support, not just with the ability to get a, a stupid question answered on an off hour, but like the fact they have a place where you can go and buy all this stuff without, I mean, do that, try that with another company or try to get a part from someone else. And I, I guarantee that if that part that you're looking for is not on that website, if you send them an email, they will be able to put you in the right direction. I guarantee that. They're not going to leave you hanging out to dry. So this gets a big thumbs up from me. It's, it's beautiful. It's fantastic. I love the look of it. I love this. At first, I wasn't sure if I was going to like this. It looks so much better in real life. Sort of this uh, cobalt sort of gray-ish bluish purpley color it's great it's great i don't think i have anything else to say other than go buy some stuff and listen to some stuff and enjoy your day